Hi, I'm Mark Hall with the Alabama Cooperative Extension System, here with Ohio State's precision ag guru, Dr. John Fulton. Crop protection chemicals are one of the most controversial and expensive parts of growing a crop. John, with the introduction of new 2,4-D and dicamba-based products, precision spraying is more important and more difficult than ever before. Help us through this maze, John. Well, we've, uh, we have come to a point here with, with the products 2,4-D and dicamba to, to even where they're specifying the type of tip that you can use with it. And so not only do you got to read the label, but now they're starting to specify in, these, in this scenario to try and reduce this issue of drift yes. and, and usage uh, per se, you know, the, the tips. And uh, we didn't put the basics in, in this particular thing because we we're talking about spraying, but at the end of the day, before you get into any kind of discussion around precision or technology on that sprayer, getting your tip right, understanding your product, matching your product to the tip is by far the most important thing that, that you're gonna do either as a grower or a commercial applicator. Um, there's a lot of tip options out there today. Uh, there's been a lot of advancement in tips uh, just in the last few years. And so um, the idea of drift, the idea of being responsible and understanding what the potential drift might be, uh, or off-site or uh, off-target applications, what those mean to you uh, become very important uh, to me when we talk about precision, precision technology, and we start to, to include spraying, and we're talking in terms of pesticides, the herbicides, insecticides, that we got to be on target. And uh, anything, uh, especially when we think about the, the sprayers t of today, yes, and uh, the timeliness you know, and speeds, the cost. the cost and the speed that we need to run in order to cover acres, uh, technology is really an enabling piece that improves uh, the target uh, or the application is to the, the target we're after, whether that's weeds, uh, to the, to the uh, weeds as the weeds themselves or the leaves of the plant or, or trying to get underneath the cover and underneath and everything. So. Like you say, this, this thing with dicamba and some of these new technologies in terms of uh, chemicals that are coming out, it's gonna be very important to, to not only, I think, make a selection and proper selection on your tips, but I think documenting that application is gonna become very important and precision technologies is, is a way to be uh, informed on documenting and verifying what went on. So, you know, Mark, Let's just start with talking about crop protection in general. Here, just as a U.S., I mean, it's important uh, to the farmer. Uh, we've become very efficient. We use less than we used to. But in order to be profitable, you got to have a good crop protection plan, both in depend, it doesn't matter what kind of crop you're growing today. Um, herbicides themselves is a, a pretty significant business. Uh, and the cost of that, again, can be very significant to the grower. Uh, just estimated and for corn and soybeans in 2014 from Purdue, you know, you're spending, you know, probably minimum $28 an acre and that could be much higher. Yes. So, you know, it's a, it's a significant part, but it's also making you profitable and giving you the proper protection uh, for some of the pests that may be out there in the field. So to do that, I mean, the goal is right on these sprayers is deliver product accurately to the target. And we want to do that uniformly. Uh, and, and so not only having that tip selected, we want to, we want the operator to be engaged and, and be able to run that or operate that machine uh, properly, and that becomes very important. And so as we think about that, to me, at least as we get to talk uh, later in our discussion around this, the technology really helps that operator maintain the performance out there in the, out there in the field and, and meets this goal set out by any, any spray, op spray operation out there. But, Mark, we've got a lot of challenges out there. We've got field attributes. We've got different crops in adjacent. We've got the cropping cycle. So timing becomes very important in the top right. And so, you know, and the machine characteristics. And I'm gonna get into this. I mean, think about the machines today. We don't have the, you know, 60 foot pole types anymore. I mean, these guys, 90, 120, 130 some foot sprayers. And that's a, that's a large sprayer, and if you're gonna operate that at 12, 15, 18, 20 miles an hour, a lot going on in a very short period of time. And, and you add in the, the environment, the wind, and all that. I mean, there's a lot of challenges that, that, that go on with a spray application. And that kind of brings us to this, and not only that, but man, 
you've been out in a lot of fields during your career, Mark. I mean, yes. yeah, you hear about those nice square or rectangular ones out there, but uh, a lot of places in, in a country you get stuff like this. That's the reality right there. And you're taking that big machine, you know, it's kind of like trying to stick a, a square peg in a round hole. I mean, it just doesn't fit yes. very well. And But as, a, as an operator and thinking about some of these issues, whether yes. it's drift or off-site movement or off-target spraying, we can't have that today. Your neighbors are watching, brother. And, uh, and so this is reality. We're not square. We've got small to large fields. Uh, we've got terrain differences and even ter terraces. You know, think about South Alabama. And, and then we've got these conservation structures, and we want to preserve those, the yes. grass waterways, the buffers that people invested on uh, to be uh, environmental stewards and to limit off-site transport of nutrients and pests, pesticides and such. So we want to conserve those as well. And so to me, the technologies today that we can, can put on these sprayers really help us better manage these conditions. I mean, here's a con just an example where we got a grass waterway, we got a buffer, and, and we just don't want to see this much, but you see where that grass waterway uh, and that soybean field's been sprayed out, and, and that defeats the purpose of it. Yes. And uh, you can see part of that buffer strip where doing that outer edge of the field kind of got over into the vegetation. Again, um, today, Mark, and we'll show this once we get to talking about technology, I can make a map of that field of where I actually want to spray. And if any part of that boom moves into a no spray zone, it just shuts off. And think about eliminating that dis decision and, uh, from the operator it just really yes. helps them do a better job. So we want to do that, but you, as I mentioned, uh, the ability and, and for these large machines uh, and the train in this case, in this example that they're put into, it's, there's a lot going on. And if you're spraying a 120 foot boom, you want to take advantage of any technology to ensure uh, good placement, proper boom height and et cetera that needs to happen out there, especially at 18 miles an hour. So, you know, that's what I'm kind of thinking about on precision spraying. Uh, just to kind of define us for us for this uh, session, Mark, you know, precision spraying incorporates all these technologies. To me, it's really about minimizing the amount of inputs. Really, it's an overlap reduction strategy, so we're not double or triple applying in areas. Uh, we improve the field application accuracy and the uniformity and allow the technology to help take some of those decisions that uh, can be very difficult uh, out of the operator. And what it also enables really is just this ability to collect verification data. You know, I got the as applied data that kind of says what, when, where, you know, and, and that can be a very valuable if someone shows up and says, okay, looks like we had some drift and you can pull that out and said, you know, I haven't been out in that field over those two weeks. So it just, that couldn't happen. That could be a, a true verification. So that's kind of what precision spraying is and, and to me, some of the things that we need to think about and, and deal with, and then and kind of our part B of this session, Mark, we'll get to talking technologies. John, this is so important that you, you cannot ignore this technology. Some you can take or leave, but this you better do right every time. It is so important to protect the environment, to get along with your neighbors. This is number one. So we'll look forward to next time you're going to talk some more about precision spraying. And please watch the rest of our Precision Ag videos. Thank you.